What's up guys, welcome back once again to Chris Aquariums. As you can see, I'm sitting in front of the new tank and we do have some new creatures to go along with it. The first of which is the Toki Snail. So funnily enough, when I set up the new tank, even though I used the previous rock, the previous biological media and a lot of the old equipment, I still came across a lot of new tank syndrome issues, the first of which being brown diatoms. Now brown diatoms often occur in a new tank where there's an imbalance between the biological load and the biological filtration. And it does correct itself over time, but I wanted to get the creature that eats it and also at the same time adding to my cleanup crew, so I got a trochus snail. Now what are trochus snails? Banded trochus snails specifically are a type of invertebrate, obviously a snail, which has a turban type shell, which is why it's often called the turban snail, and it is part of the cleanup crew in your tank. So a little bit of information, it grows up to about one inch in diameter, and its primary food source, or its only food source, is basically herbivore, which means it eats all types of algae, such as cyanobacteria, brown diatoms, and although it's not super effective, also some forms of algae, such as hair algae. The nice thing about a trochus snail is that it's one of the few aquarium snails that can right itself when it's fallen over. A lot of other snails, when it falls over, you have to manually flip it back yourself, or obviously it won't survive. I only got one trochus snail, but if you do want it to reproduce, it does reproduce sexually, which means it needs more snails in a tank, and they reproduce quite easily, so I'm told. The last thing about them is that they also are good film eaters, which means if you have film that builds up on your glass or the back of your tank, it will feed on that as well, which keeps the tank a little bit cleaner, but to be honest, I wouldn't say one snail is going to do a lot for your glass. You still have to clean it manually, uh, manually yourself, but it's an added bonus. So let's get into the footage. I have a WhatsApp group with a bunch of reef enthusiasts and one of them has a choker snail for me. So I went to go and pick it up and this is the footage from that. Okay guys, I have got the choker snail and we are on the way back home. I kind of look like Fred from Scooby-Doo right now with this thing. But um, let me show you him in a second and then we'll get him home and put him in the tank. Okay, this is him. As you can see, they're one of the few snails that can actually right themselves in the reef tank. Let's get him acclimated to the water. So we're first going to acclimate for temperature and then we're going to drip acclimate for water parameters and then introduce him into the tank. And there you go, he's in the tank, moving around, obviously acclimating to the new environment. So let's check in on him when he's a bit more comfortable. Since adding the trophy snail into the tank, it has now been about four weeks. And can I tell you, honestly, I have never seen a snail do more work than this trochus snail. I had brown diatoms throughout the tank and within two days, one snail had cleaned up the entire surface. Honestly, I couldn't recommend them higher. Incredible job. Matter of fact, he's actually doing some work now. Let me show you some footage of what he's up to. And that's it for today's episode guys. Thank you once again for watching. It's really appreciated. If you want, you can like the video for some algorithm up in the sky. Feel free to drop a comment if there's anything you want to know about trochus snails or anything else about this tank or marine freshwater ponds in general. There's so much that's already been done on this tank that's been filmed sitting on my laptop ready to go and so much that's still to come. So if you want to follow along the journey and see my other tanks and ponds, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you once again, as always, next time. <laughs> on Chris Aquariums.